Don't be the farmer's friend tutorial. It, no, it might be if you never know. This is a lot more work than expected. But this will be my first time running this. This will be pretty interesting to do. There she is. It's just you, getting water. It, it's, it's a hefty task. And uh, the sun is setting, so I've got to move very fast here. It's yeah, high tunnel look. building day. It is the first day we are starting the build. It is definitely not going to get done in all one day, but this Saturday is our official like break ground and really get going on our tunnel. Do you want to share the specs of the tunnel? Like where did yep. we buy it and what are the dimensions? We bought a farmer's friend 14 by 100 foot tunnel. The reason we went with a 100 is we had the room. And the longer you can make your rows, the more efficient you can be. Because one of the expenses in tunnel building is the ends. And if you have four ends, that's more expensive than two ends. Good and point. You can do them cheap. You can just kind of twist the fabric and put it with a T-post. But we want to make it a little more usable. But some of the other stuff we have to do is we have to get water over to it. Half the battle on farm. Step one. <laughs> at least in a place that can be as dry as Oklahoma is making sure that you always have a reliable source of water. We were blessed on this property with its design that meets kind of our need because the water line runs right down the middle from the road uh, to our side lot here where we're doing all our growing. It's a nice little trench you can see in the ground. And I had to dig this out a couple days ago so that I could prepare for this, exposing our water main so that I can tap into it. We did this once. Uh, back for our main fields and I put a yard hydrant in. Luckily Oklahoma is only two feet down. That's something you can do kind of by hand. So found that and then now I need to bring that water. Let's see if I can, am I, am yeah, I on there? You're in. We have to bring the water from down where that hole is over to where we're going to put the 100 foot tunnel. And so I'm not digging that by hand because I want this to be two feet down. That would be too much work. So Thank God for modern inventions like a trencher. But this will be my first time running this. This will be pretty interesting to do. So we're gonna bring this over. And then here is the site. This is about 60 feet over to where we're gonna do this tunnel. We've been silaging this. We've been silaging this for all summer, basically. I actually have video of that moving, of the silage still in the library, so we'll We'll show, we got a 30 by 105 foot silage that we've been using everywhere. The tunnel will actually go another 20 feet further <laughs> than this. So it's a very long growing space. It's gonna be pretty incredible looking in the spring with 100 feet Ryan, of run ranunculus. The end of the tunnel. Yeah, go run. You can literally sprint. That's our compost pile back there for Wave all our stuff. from the end of the tunnel. Watch me. Wave. Wave, hi. <laughs> okay. So that's 100 feet, run back. Run back! Our plan is to use like the last 20 feet of the tunnel as kind of like a storage. You know, in the future, maybe we'll go all the way to the end. But I think we'll start with three 80 foot rows. There's going to be three foot rows on each side. And then there's going to be a four foot wide uh, growing row right down the middle. And that's our plan. So that's actually it's probably going to be a little bit more growing space than our actual fields. One of our fields are at 30 by 60 plots. So I think it's going to be around 2000 square feet between those three rows. Today, we're going to pull up the landscape fabric and the silage so that we can just kind of let them breathe a little bit. We're going to be bringing in some more compost and I'm going to be doing a till before we, before we do the full tunnel build. This is going to be an entertaining build having not done it before. I can't believe this two years be, ago. This won't be the farmer's friend tutorial. It, no, it might be if you never know. But today's goal will be let's get water over here.
All right, update. Working with the trencher back there for the first time. And because we have heavy clay soil, when you get down past about 12, 14 inches, uh, it was really straining. So I ended up having to go once down to about like 12, 14 inches. And then I went again to try to pull up more dirt. It was just kicking up so much dirt. Let me just show. It was kicking up so much dirt that uh, kind of clogs on itself uh, when you're going down two feet. I ended up going one time and then I used my tractor to kind of back pull the dirt away and then I did another pass. And then now we're at about two feet. Well, not about, I wanted to make sure we were at two feet. I think Oklahoma's frost line is 18 inches. So two feet's a good safety buffer. Uh, but this is only about 60 feet of trench. And uh, wow. Uh, I'm gonna do PVC. Maybe I'll get, maybe I'll look at some PEX fittings, but um, cause PEX could deal with a little bit of potential freezing. This is a lot more work than expected to get down two feet from a, I guess probably the smaller trencher that they have. So these things are beasts. So it would be much harder if I had to do this by hand. I don't think I could do two feet this far down. That would have just been backbreaking. So thank God for modern machines and inventions like this that make our lives easier. But it's just amazing how even on a small piece of property like this, it's just getting water to different places and running lines is, it, it's, it's a hefty task. So my wife's taking the kids to an event tonight for their co-op. So I just wanted to show how this works. When you're trying to splice an inline, I dug probably a 18 inch by 18 inch box here to get to the water main. And then I build this structure that looks like a, you know, like a little bit of a U shape. And then um, since this is a one and a quarter, I need to go to a three quarter. So I build out this piece I build the elbows and then I leave some parts unglued. I like, uh, like I don't leave this. I don't want to glue that one yet. And you got to do these first and then you got to get the right width. So that's why I didn't glue it over here so I could stretch it. And then, um, you kind of slide this on when you're done and then you get it all set. And then I'm going to run the three quarters off of it. on camera that's just how this is gonna be when you're six foot five and you're trying to dig deep in here all right here we go I'm just gonna bring this around gonna work this back here this is deep you want to hold it for about 30 seconds three two one all right there she is All right, so that's the water main. Comes in right there. It's gonna snake around and it'll continue to our house. And now I've gotta head that way because I've got our high tunnel. It's all the way 50 feet away over there. I've already got, if you can see over here, I've already got the, the water lawn prepped. 50 feet of it so I'm gonna get that in the hole and then we're gonna join it on this side we'll join it down here first because at the other end I have a right angle coupling for a three-quarter inch that's where the yard hydrant is gonna go and uh, the Sun is setting so I've got to move very fast here All right, now I gotta join this out, which I just made super muddy. 
All right, let's just do these lines. Now there's one step, but I don't know if I trust the one step for an underground job. Can't even see what I'm doing down here, to be honest. All right, pipe. Moving the truth here. I don't even have water to wash my hands with. I'm literally filthy. Should have gotten a bucket of water because I'm hungry. And now it needs to dry for 20 minutes. Oh, thrilling video content. I gotta dig out this side because I need a nice box for the, the gravel to go on the yard hydrant. So the power of YouTube, I'm just gonna do a two, three. There it is. It's like 28 inches deep down there. So that's about good because it's for 24 inch. I think we're actually like 18 inch to the frost line. So 24 inches is a bit conservative. Now I've got to lay the line in and get it kind of pressed down. I got to get this behemoth in. Yeah, two foot buried depth. The brain isn't functioning well because I'm a bit dehydrated. To support it because I don't want it on the PVC pipe. All right, dear Lord, I pray for no leaks. I'm gonna turn the water back on. Uh. All right. All right. I don't see anything. I don't see anything down here. This is excellent. Thank you, Lord, so far. Oh, I have to capture this after a long day working on this. Just hang the bucket from here. That's the nice thing about these Woodfords. Finish. So you turn it off. A little stream of water down here that just drains it out. Let's see if I can see it. So it drains out the tube below the frost line. And that's how they work. Wow. I know this was a bit more of a technical video, but you never know. Somebody might need just the right tip on how to splice into your water main. Half the battle is getting water in places, especially in a more drought prone climate like Oklahoma. So hopefully that'll help somebody with a much shorter video on how to approach putting the yard hydrant in. I'll uh, walk through it here in a second, but appreciate being able to help anybody splice into your water main without having to dig an enormous hole so that you can kind of like bend the pieces and get a T splice in to do that little snaking thing is a lot uh, a lot easier on the digging. So we got the yard hydrant in. We also buried an entire electrical line to the house. So we can have power for future applications here, such as maybe high tunnel fans or anything like that. But why don't we just take a walk quickly over here on the tour. This was, a, this was exactly, almost exactly 50 foot from our water main all the way across. I'm putting the electrical line here in the future and then the, the yard hydrant is here. Woke up this morning with a micro leak and the trench was partially flooded and it was clearly leaking out. Um, it's not the most confidence inspiring to take a giant metal uh, yard hydrant and attach it to plastic PVC bushings. So I think in the future I would recommend getting maybe like a metal right angle shark bite fitting and then take that shark bite and then you can put it connect it right to the pvc i think it'd be a lot more confidence inspiring than connecting this very heavy metal yard hydrant to plastic you can hear the sound you'll hear the empty sound of the yard hydrant when you start it up
that sound of it filling up like a whistle. That means it's draining properly, which is good because that's the whole point of them as they drain below the frost line. So yard hydrants in, 50 foot line, but I'm thankful we live in Oklahoma where you only have to dig down two feet because otherwise running in a water line, as you get further north, you have to get a backhoe and it's an even bigger mess than this in order to get this kind of uh, functionality over here. But we tested this earlier today uh, after we reseeded it. And I mean, for four hours, there was nothing leaking out of the, of the bottom. And if you also see, I used the T-post here to secure the yard hydrant so that it's extra rigid and keeps a lot of the, uh, the flex off of it. So yeah, also trenchers move a lot slower than you realize. At two feet, you probably need to be barely moving. I think you're supposed to do a foot every minute. Um, otherwise, it just seized up, at least at this size, and especially in clay soil. So anyways, short technical video. If you're running water on your property, uh, the, the way I attach to the water main is, uh, it's been proven. I've done it twice now. It's really solid. That's my tips. From Coram Deo Farm, this is Eric, signing off.